So, to be a great Starfleet captain, it isn't merely a matter of being the best at hitting your objective as laid out in the commanding officer handbooks or necessarily being an unblemished character. It's more about completing missions, adhering to the greater good, making tough decisions and keeping your crew together as a unit. It's a smorgasbord of requirements that make judging a person's achievements against another's a difficult prospect. But hey, someone's got to do it, right? Over the years, there have been many captains in Star Trek movies, TV shows, and for the sake of boundaries, we're only looking at the captains of the main ships in the universe. There are, of course, other names to consider briefly in this ranking. Officers as wide-ranging as Saru, Wesley Crusher, Spock, Worf, and Harry Kim have all been granted the position of acting captain on their various ships, but they're a consideration for another time, right? So who is the best captain in Star Trek, and who didn't fare so well? My name is Chris Thompson, and if you're a nerd like me, go give What Culture Sci-Fi a follow on Twitter. And these are the Star Trek captains ranked worst to best. Number 10, Gabriel Lorca of the USS Buran and the USS Discovery. Aye, right, so uh, strictly speaking, there are of course two Lorcas, but only one of them actually took command of the Discovery. And it's not even clear at what point the real Lorca was replaced by his Mirror Universe version. It's because he didn't come with one of those handy evil goatees, right, that we saw in the earlier Star Trek iterations. Oh, and in the uh, Star Trek Next Generation Mirror Universe graphic novels, Evil Picard, nuff said. It's hard to assume what Lorca was like as a captain, but presumably he was well thought of. And the Mirror Universe version is absolutely not one of the better commanding officers, because fundamentally, he's a bit of a sh**. And he also fails in his objectives as a captain, no matter how nefarious. Number 9, Christopher Pike of the USS Enterprise. Without the 25% different Pike, there would be no 25% different Kirk. He was instrumental in convincing the troubled young man who was born out of tragedy to join Starfleet. At that point, he was a Starfleet instructor, but he also served on at least four different vessels during his career. In terms of leadership, Pike wasn't actually that great of a captain, and he was set up as something as a fall guy to make Kirk look better. He was captured as part of the main narrative in Star Trek 2009 on the Enterprise's maiden voyage. His most lasting legacy in that respect was promoting Spock and Kirk, and even then, he made the wrong decision on which role to give each. He is an important part of Starfleet history, as well as Kirk's, but judged on the merits of his captaincy of the Enterprise in J.J. Abrams' 25% different Kelvin universe, it's a 1D he was promoted to Admiral. And then, when he returned as the captain of the Enterprise a year after his promotion, when Kirk was demoted, his only notable act was being killed and not seeing it coming. The briefest of nods to Richard Rabot, who was the tragic captain of the USS Kelvin, whose destruction would be so important to the young life of the 25% different Kirk. Number 8, Philippa Giorgio of the USS Shenzo. While she's not the worst Starfleet captain, Discovery's Giorgio can't rank any higher than this because of the crucial failure to heed the warning of her first officer. You know, because she doesn't get anything wrong, ever. Giorgio had pronounced loss in her past, which added a suggestion of complexity, particularly as it didn't overshadow her approach to life or her fundamental optimism. She was brilliant, highly decorated as an officer, and encouraged an easygoing atmosphere in her command. She also recognized brilliance, promoting Burnham to her first officer. Unfortunately, she also underestimated both Burnham's advice, the Klingons as a race, and then messed up her own key mission. And no amount of commendations can help you when you make the catastrophic decision to engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat with a Klingon. Predictably, she got as a direct response to her own choices. Hopefully we'll see the Mirror Universe Giorgio push her up the rankings in her own spin-off show. Number 7, Jonathan Archer of the USS Enterprise NX-01. Though it's tempting, you shouldn't judge Jonathan Archer, either for the perceived weakness of the show he starred in or its almost unlistenable soundtrack. But even judged on his merits as a captain in his own right, he comes up a little bit short compared to the competition. He's way more laid back than other captains here and feels a little bit more like a head of a family rather than a military leader. For some, that will absolutely be a weakness, but the lack of a cutthroat edge does serve Archer well in some circumstances. He's probably more empathetic, more personally close to his crew, but he also has more of an intrepid twinkle of exploration in his eye. It's just such a shame that he was held back on his mission of discovery by his distrust of Vulcans. He grows of that and it changes, but it's a strange trait for somebody whose job defines he should act in completely the opposite sort of way. 
Number six, Christopher Pike of the USS Enterprise and the USS Discovery. Aye, right, Christopher Pike could and probably should have been way more of a presence in the original series of Star Trek than he ever got to be. Thanks to the failure of the first pilot, The Cage, and some accusations of meddling by actor Jeffrey Hunter's wife, who had edgily convinced him that sci-fi was beneath him, Pike was replaced by Kirk as the Enterprise's captain. Other than that, and another appearance later in the series in an almost unrecognisable form, that would have been it for this version of the character. But then, Star Trek Discovery came along, and Pike returned, leaving a far more positive impact despite him only being involved in a few episodes. In the second season of Discovery, he takes over the titular vessel from acting Captain Saru, and suddenly we are able to get to know him more than just from Kirk's second-hand admiration for him. Which makes sense given the narrative that the former is a hero of the latter, as both are adventurous and have that sort of swashbuckling feel about them. He's more level-headed than Kirk though, and is restrained alongside his intellect. He also proves himself willing to put his own fate aside for the greater good. What a guy. Number five, James T. Kirk from the Kelvin timeline of the USS Enterprise. Do they count as separate captains? Of course they do. A captain is judged by his decisions and actions and the two Kirks led completely different lives at the helms of their ships. They also went through completely different things as a young man because of the split in those timelines. They're completely different characters, at least 25% different characters. The same free spirit and almost defiant energy runs through the Kelvin Kirk's veins. He can be petulant, hot-headed, arrogant, but thanks to the combination of his crew and instincts, he is still a remarkable character. He is slightly more defiant and more quick to passionate outbursts than his alternate version, because he has a darker backstory, of course, which makes him a little bit more of a loose cannon. But while that could hold him back, it's also one of his virtues at times. Number four, Benjamin Sisko of the USS Defiant and Deep Space Nine. Captain Sisko is an entirely different prospect to the rest of the Starfleet officers here because his remit was always different. Rather than lead an intrepid mission to seek out new worlds and new civilizations, Sisko didn't really boldly go anywhere. Exploration, scientific and religious revelations came to him. Cited as a platform for exploration on the very edge of the unknown, Sisko's outpost was a difficult prospect to manage because of the divergent personalities and the interests on board. His remit was also far more split than the other captains because his focus wasn't just on exploration or military action. What other captain had to be so concerned with trade, defense, and scientific exploration all at once? Sisko also balanced that with a defiance of authority when it meant protecting his crew. And something else that wasn't a consideration for anything else was being a father on active duty, having to deal with the inappropriate setting to raise his child and flourish him. Well, mostly. That was a testament to his greatness. Number three, Catherine Janeway of the USS Voyager. While Deep Space Nine was a superior spin-off show, f off it was, Captain Janeway is a force of nature who deserves even more credit than Cisco because of her ship's mission. Janeway is a formidable leader with a formidable intellect and might well rank the highest of this entire group in strategic terms. She wouldn't deviate from her mission unless compelled hugely, like the stakes involved the lives of her entire crew, for example. And while someone like Kirk was a huge risk taker, that was the opposite of how Janeway operated. The stoicism could have been seen as a limitation, but more than any other captain, Janeway actually paid attention to the necessary balance between her personability and her professionalism with her crew. And it helped her make difficult decisions, like when she was actually forced to risk her crew for the sake of saving the many over the few. Number two, James T. Kirk of the USS Enterprise. Charismatic, bold, passionate, seductive. These are all words one can use to describe William Shatner's dynamic, rebellious Captain James T. Kirk. Hell, they're probably words he'd use to describe himself if it came to it. Kirk is the ultimate rebel, with a cause. A free wheeler and thinker within a hierarchy that he believes is malleable because of his strength and convictions and how strong his instincts are. He might reject textbook approaches to things and might not be the most tactically sound leaders in the universe, but when he depends on instincts, they're more often than not correct. It's like f magic in that respect. If he's judged solely by his achievements and the mission successes, albeit with half a cynical eye on how many red shirts he burns through, he's a marvel and a maverick. It's just when the scrutiny goes into his methods that he falls behind the outright winner. Number one, Jean-Luc Picard of the USS Stargazer and the USS Enterprises D&E. The age-old, well, franchise-old 
question of which Enterprise captain is the best was always going to be a difficult one, but Picard shades it based on his navigation of some of the more difficult trials and tribulations he went through. His tenure as captain of the Enterprise was very much one of tribulations rather than tribbles. Picard might be more by the book than Kirk, but he's also the guy who rewrote the book. And it's not like he didn't have his rebellious moments too, in the interest of greater good. Picard was way more of an advocate for the rights of the individual and an open approach to other species. His response was not always war. He's also a complex figure because he has a massive blind spot when it comes to the Borg that sits at odds with his approach elsewhere, which we believe is going to be a massive part of the Picard series. That complexity means nuance, vulnerability and intrigue, but it never fully compromises his actions. Based on all of that, of course Jean-Luc Picard is the captain that is coming back for the new Star Trek series. So that's your lot. Did I do all right? Send all your hate to me on Twitter at EditChrisEdit and follow What Culture Sci Fi whilst you're there. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe on all open frequencies. I've been Chris from What Culture. Be excellent to each other.